Good morning to everybody and uh, thank you for attending this presentation. Um, my name is Sergio Savaresi, I'm from Politecnico di Milano and today I will uh, uh, present you a sort of a glance uh, into the future of personal mobility. Uh, let me give a few words about myself and uh, my university. I'm from Politecnico di Milano. Politecnico is the leading university in Italy. Uh, it's very high ranked, especially in the engineering and technology uh, area. Uh, I'm the founder and the chair of a large uh, group uh, uh, fully focused on system and control in vehicles. So mobility and vehicles uh, uh, is my main research uh, activity. Uh, my group is also very active, uh, uh, not only in uh, uh, applied research and uh, development activity, but also in the direct technology transfer. So we have been uh, spin-offing uh, uh, more than 10 startups uh, and uh, new companies the last in the last few years. Um, let me now start my presentation uh, with a very general prologue. Uh, let me talk about uh, the so-called mega trends. So which are the main mega trends that, that which are going to affect uh, uh, the future mobility? Um, so the first one is very simple and uh, it's the um, let me use the pointer. Um, it's uh, the, uh, in the demographic growth uh, uh, of, the, of the population in the world. And so you can see here this impressive uh, picture. You can see that since about uh, 150 years ago, there has been an incredible exponential growth of the population. It's very difficult to uh, foresee uh, the, the, the future evolution of the population, what is truth uh, is that uh, today we are able to make planet modification. We can do anthropogenic planet modification. So the second one is urbanization. You can see again the trend. We are going into a deep uh, uh, urbanization of the population, uh, creating congestion from moving cars and parked cars. However, uh, let's say the, the COVID uh, uh, situation uh, uh, open a new window. So someone is asking if uh, this unstoppable trend uh, is going to invert uh, and to start decreasing because uh, the massive usage of, uh, let's say, uh, online working, smart working uh, can uh, um, dramatically change uh, this uh, direction, this trend. The third one is aging. You can see here uh, the picture of uh, old age dependency ratio. So ratio of population aged plus or 65 plus uh, over the uh, population 2064. You can see Italy, for instance, Italy is one of the uh, oldest population in the world. Today we are at 40%. Uh, in 250, we expect uh, more than 70%, which is a huge number. And of course, this is going to affect uh, uh, the type of future mobility, let's call it customers of future mobility. But the most important uh, trend, the most important, uh, um, let's say, issue, which is affecting, um, let's say, the entire world population is uh, a greenhouse effect. Uh, so in this picture, a lot of information is condensed. Uh, so just in brief, uh, basically in... Uh, almost 20, 200 years, uh, um, let's say, uh, the, the human race uh, has burned uh, fossil fuel and uh, put in atmosphere about 2,000 gigatons of, of, of CO2, uh, creating one degree more of temperature. Uh, we know that we cannot exceed uh, uh, two degree temperature. This is uh, really a limit uh, that we can afford. Um, and so the population, the human race, uh, has a sort of residual budget, which is estimated to be uh, 1,500 gigatons of CO2. And uh, it's incredible to see how this residual budget uh, is just a tiny percentage uh, of uh, all the oil we know, uh, and this is, we are, I'm just, I'm missing the coal and uh, the um, natural gas and so on. So basically only a small fraction of oil resources can be burned. So we have to go as soon as possible to um, a, a zero CO2 impact uh, uh, way of, 
moving and working and living. So uh, all in all, the mega trends in personal mobility are this. So we are uh, today still uh, in uh, this type of model of mobility. So big and heavy cars, fossil fuel, personal ownership, human driven. And we have to go as soon as possible. Estimated time is 20, 30 years into a new type of mobility model, small and light, electric, shared, autonomous, and of course, connected. What is important to highlight uh, is that uh, the automation of the driver will be the real big bang uh, of this revolution because the automation of the driver will boost uh, the servitization of the mobility or the sharing of the mobility and the share of the mobility will boost uh, the size reduction and most importantly the electrification so today we talk about uh, a lot about electrification but electrification will be so the second and final wave of electrification will be boosted mostly by the automation of the drive we will see later a few comments about that a few words about the electrification. Um, so the electric car today, and this is a misperception, is cheaper with respect to, to a, 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 a gasoline, a classical gasoline car. You can see here the uh, in Europe, especially in Europe, uh, the figures of the cost uh, uh, of fuel and uh, fuel accumulation per uh, 100 kilometers. So let's say it's 10. Uh, for a for a, a gasoline ICE IC car, and it's 7.7 .7 for an electric car. Notice that a significant part is energy, but the major part uh, is about battery consumption equivalent cost. And this is, of course, it's influenced by taxes. So today, most of this cost is due to taxes, um, but it's valid whatever is the size of the battery. And about this, there is a lot of misperception. The second mis misperception is about um, the over lifetime of a battery pack. So today people are asking more and more range, uh, but notice that there is a hidden drawback uh, is that the lifetime uh, of a battery pack uh, with about 1500 cycles, uh, possible cycles uh, uh, is uh, let's say 300,000 kilometers uh, if the range of the car is 200 kilometers, if you double the range, say 400, you get a 600,000 kilometers lifetime, which is a really huge lifetime for a car. So uh, this is why there is this misper misperception and increasing too much the range is not uh, the most sound direction that electric cars are going to take. The third point, again, there is a lot of misper misperception about that, is the recharge time. Um, so there is a general expectation that sooner or later it will be possible to achieve a three minutes recharge time like today. But notice that the power which is uh, um, put into the tank today is equivalent to about 10 megawatt. So it's really impossible for uh, the network structure and network capacity to achieve and to match uh, this type of recharging time. And the final misperception, which is probably the biggest one, is about the real need of range. Uh, this picture is very interesting. Uh, it has been, um, it's the outcome of a recent uh, research we have done using telematic data. We have analyzed more than uh, 150 millions uh, of trips uh, of Italian cars. Uh, and this is the outcome. So for instance, uh, this is the percentage of vehicle that uh, uh, no more, uh, sorry, that um, uh, never do more than 300 kilometers uh, during the year. So let me stress uh, during an entire year. So it's not an average. So this means that 50% uh, of the Italian cars never do during a day more than 300 kilometers. And if you take away one day, two days, three days, five days. Not if you take out uh, of this counting five days per year, the percentage goes up uh, to about 92%, which is really a huge number. So all in all, there is a really big mis misperception of the real need of uh, range of autonomy uh, for a car. And something in this neighborhood probably is the right compromise between cost, weight, uh, uh, lifetime of the battery pack, and real need of an electric car. A few quick remarks. Of course, we know that, uh, um, let's say, 
from the CO2 impact uh, going electric is not uh, uh, enough. So for instance, uh, in France, uh, electricity is produced with uh, 50 gram per kilowatt hour. In Estonia, it's more than 1000. So it really depends on how we produce electricity. Um, lithium is going to be uh, a raw material uh, which is going to influence the new equilibria. is a, is a very critical raw material and is very much concentrated in um, in in south in south america so it's incredible to see that about 50 percent of the easily exploitable resources are in bolivia uh, and uh, for the uh, manufacturing of um, uh, electric motor uh, based on permanent magnets. Uh, we need rare earth. Uh, and again, China is a monopolist about that. So, uh, I mean, this, this, this is about uh, the distribution of natural resources which are needed to go, uh, to go electric. Um, the second, uh, let's say, topic I, I would like to, to briefly uh, discuss with you is the uh, self-driving car or the autonomous car. As I told you before, this is the real big bang of the revolution in, in the mobility. Uh, where are we today? So today we are on the edge between the level two autonomous car and the level three. Notice that uh, level three is similar to the autopilot of, a, of an airplane. So it's like this is the image of level three. So basically you can disengage uh, and you are authorized, you can legally disengage and do something else like reading a newspaper or whatever you like. Notice that from the technological point of view, L2 and L3 are very, very similar, but the real quantum leap uh, is about the liability because in level three, the liability, the responsibility is handed over from the driver to the car manufacturer or to the autonomous system manufacturer. So this is uh, something which is going to take some time uh, because it's a real legal quantum leap. What is going to happen in, uh, let's say, with the automatization of the driver? This is what we expect uh, in, uh, let's say, 15, 20 years. So starting from today's situation where most of the cars are, let's say, all purpose, let's say function and fun are private object, uh, a bit of function, a bit of fun, uh, in a clear bifurcation with a small niche of emotional cars. It's really a niche, uh, just, just really emotional cars. But the largest majority of the car will be uh, made by, let's say, A to B, from A to B, shared robot cars or robotaxi. So this is going to be the largest majority of the, of the car. Uh, with this model, um, we will see a major reduction in volumes. Uh, how much, uh, again, real data can tell us uh, how much is the expected reduction of the number of cars? Uh, you can see here, this is a real data plot. Uh, this is the number, the percentage of simultaneously used cars in Italy. Uh, and you can see that with 10% of the cars available today in a fully shared autonomous robotaxi model, with 10% of the car, we can perfectly fulfill the need of mobility. Uh, of course, uh, we expect, uh, so if the way people are going to use the cars uh, does not change, uh, a 10 times increase of the average mileage. So basically we expect few cars, uh, very highly technology equipped, uh, uh, like uh, with a model very similar to, to those of, of the taxi. Um, the big question is now, uh, we can expect uh, a 10 to 1 reduction in number of cars, uh, but the question is, is going to happen even more? So this is the intensity of the cars uh, in Los Angeles area before COVID and during COVID. Um, so we, we are talking about, we have been talking about uh, the mega trends of physical personal mobility, but let me remind you that uh, the uh, 30 years from 1990 to 2020 uh, can be probably, will be probably um, remembered as the digital convergence uh, 30 years. So 
all these objects uh, has been converging into this, uh, uh, let's say, mobile, personal mobile device. Uh, the next 20 years, we will probably be remembered as the digital mobility convergence uh, 20 years. So mobility as a service, uh, autonomous cars, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, smart glasses, and whatever you like. So it's a mix uh, of physical and virtual mobility. So we are going very quickly in the virtual way. And uh, let's say the way I'm talking to you, I'm not physically in a conference room by talking uh, with the uh, e-conference method. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a clear, um, it, it tells us the direction we are going. So this is the evolution or the escalation of the mobility. So this is 30, 40 years ago. This is yesterday, this is, this is today, and this is tomorrow. Because ICT technologies are evolving much faster than vehicle and transport. There are no safety issues. There are no major infrastructure investment or a much smaller infrastructure investment. So a near future with limited personal mobility is probably going to happen. Let me show you some recent uh, data. Uh, this is uh, the question, have you purchased groceries online, which is a sort of ultimate uh, uh, way of doing uh, online uh, e-commerce. E uh, you can see the trend was already clear, but COVID uh, create a, a, a major boost, uh, a major acceleration in this trend. So it's, it's basically an acceleration of a trend which was already happening. Um, if this is the trend, uh, what is going to happen is that what, what, what is becoming more and more important is goods delivery. Uh, parcels delivery. So this is the expectation in 2020, uh, but uh, this number should be updated with higher numbers. 80% are light parcels, 50% of delivery cost is last mile delivery. So we are going into two different directions. From one side, we see the Uberization, so mobility as a service. This is sort of symbol or icon of this robot taxi autonomous car model. So on the other side, we can also see a major trend, uh, which is goods mobility. We can call it the Amazonization of the, of the mobility. Um, couple of um, videos. This is a, a visionary video from Continental Corporation. You see uh, the, the mini electric bus uh, uh, bringing some uh, uh, robo dogs, uh, male dogs uh, uh, that deliver the package uh, or a bit less, uh, a bit more uh, down to earth. Uh, this is a recent video, a uh, recent project from uh, Polytechnic Milano, this is a spin-off. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a yay project. It's a sort, sort of uh, uh, fully autonomous Pony Express for last mile delivery uh, indoor or in, uh, in a urban environment. So this is the direction we are going, we are going to take. So uh, timeline. So I told you that today, if there are 100 cars today, we expect uh, going down to 10 with a massive introduction of robot taxi mobility model, but we increase virtualization of mobility, we can go down to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and we don't exactly know how small this number can become. And these two phenomena are working in parallel. So about the uh, automation of the driver, uh, there are some uh, estimation, uh, there are some forecast. Uh, this is a McKinsey, recent McKinsey estimation that tells that uh, in 2035, uh, the number of level three autonomy or more can be from 10 to, to 95 range uh, of the cars, which means it's really difficult to predict uh, because most of this range depend on the, on. Uh, regulatory uh, issues uh, and liability issues. Uh, I, I like to highlight uh, this, this, which is a sort of dilemma of, uh, um, of, um, of governments today, of, uh, of policymakers today. So this is a comparison between introducing immediately today the autonomous vehicles, even though they are not uh, 
fully safe or to wait a lot, to wait other 15 years until they are almost perfect. And the balance between the fatalities, this is an estimation in the US, between this strategy that looks very aggressive and very unsafe and this which look much more safe uh, is uh, a uh, loss of, uh, sorry, there is a, there is a, uh, it's a wrong zero, 400,000 people uh, saved if you take, would take this much more aggressive policy. So this is an example where the best for the single, which is, let me say this today, if you look at, at the single fatality, is against the best for all. This is a big dilemma that policymaker will have in the next uh, 10 to 20 years. So let me conclude by uh, with a bit uh, provocatory uh, conclusion. So which are the survivors of the physical mobility on the 10 to 30 years horizon? So the first one uh, for sure is the robotaxi. So dramatic reduction of the number of vehicles, uh, possibly very weak market segmentation. There is debate on this issue. And of course, a few manufacturer, high tech robotization, automation and technology. This is going to be the important technology for this type of car. Small niche, leisure vehicles, the red cars, the emotional cars, leisure vehicles, probably confined to circuits if autonomous mode will be not available for them. Very important, soft mobility. Soft mobility is, uh, 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 is one of the most uh, rapidly increasing uh, uh, types of mobility, so e-bikes, uh, bikes, uh, scooters, e-scooters, and so on. This is a huge trend. Uh, commercial vehicles, we have seen that uh, the Amazonization of mobility will boost a lot uh, the uh, good transportation part uh, of the mobility, so from the long haul um, transportation, small metropolitan, metropolitan trucks, uh, and the dronization of the last mile. And the last but not least uh, is not strictly related to mobility, but they are still vehicles. Uh, so we need food uh, anyway in any type of mobility. And so there, there is an unstoppable trend uh, of the automatization of the agricultural machines for both extensive crops uh, and for intensive agriculture. So the dronization is uh, a very important trend uh, also in this field to achieve maximum efficiency efficiency, minimum energy consumption, water consumption, and so on and so forth. Okay, thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, I will be happy to try to answer to your question. Thank you very much.